Hello, welcome again to the course on our signal processing for music applications. In the theory lectures of this week, we introduce several methodologies to do feature analysis, to analyze sounds using spectral uh, aspects, and with them to be able to describe sounds with which then we can compare sounds, we can, uh, we can describe collections of sounds, we can find the similarity between sounds. So now, in this uh, demonstration class, I want to uh, exemplify the, the extractions of, uh, of these features using uh, some existing software, in this case, uh, Sonic Visualizer. So let's go to uh, Sonic Visualizer. Okay, I have already opened uh, this uh, piano sound that uh, we know quite well. Okay, and now what I want to do is to use some plugins uh, that I have uh, uh, downloaded uh, from the website of Sonic Visualizer to perform some analysis. So in fact, if we go to the Sonic Visualizer website and we go to the menu BAM plugins, in here there is a, a list of uh, many uh, collections of plugins. Uh, most of them do the kind of things uh, that we have been talking about, uh, analyzing uh, different aspects of low and mid-level type of features from sounds. So I already uh, got uh, some of these plugins, uh, mainly the ones uh, from Queen Mary, who is the institution that maintains and develops uh, this uh, Sonic Visualizer software. So uh, first, in order to uh, analyze some uh, audio features, let's create an empty pane. So here we have an empty pane in which we will be uh, displaying uh, these features. Okay, so now in the transform menu, there is uh, a menu that uh, says analysis by category in which uh, we have uh, a classification of different types of uh, features. And for example, let's try to uh, study the onsets of this piano sound. So we will go to, pian uh, to the time type features and the onsets. And there is this onset detection function. Okay. And uh, this is the, the description of this, uh, this plugin. Uh, it's uh, developed by uh, Queen Mary. And we have different parameters that we can control. So for example, the type of uh, feature that is used, there are several features that uh, uh, can be used. In theory class, we talked about high frequency content, so maybe let's use that. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, being a frequency domain analysis, we can choose the window size, the hop size, or the type of window, but let's just uh, leave it as default. And okay, let's uh, say okay, and this will compute uh, quite efficiently the, this onset function and uh, clearly uh, it shows like a, 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 the dynamic, in fact it, it kind of follows quite well the, uh, the energy of the signal and uh, clearly there is a, the highest uh, change of this uh, onset function is at the attacks. So now if uh, we want to actually identify where the onsets are, we can uh, choose from the same group of plugins, the one that actually will try to find the onsets. Okay, so this will uh, use that function, uh, so let's use again the high frequency content, and we will attempt to look at the, the variation of high frequency content in a way that we can identify where the transitions are. Okay, so let's just say, okay, at these, the default parameters. Uh, okay, and now these uh, vertical lines are uh, what the algorithm has considered to be uh, the onsets of this uh, phrase. Uh, the first one is clearly in the right position of the first note, the second one, uh, same thing, third, the same thing, it's pretty good. Here, I guess uh, that's a mistake. This is not really an onset. In fact, this is kind of the decay. So it has confused the high uh, frequency content of the decay uh, and it has uh, labeled that as an onset. And the same here, okay, and the rest is okay. 
So maybe let's undo this. Okay, and let's do it again, but uh, with uh, sensitivity uh, different sensitivity. So let's uh, go at the same, and now the, we saw high frequency content. But in terms of the sensitivity to being uh, fifty percent, let's reduce the sensitivity. So for example, let's just make it very low. Let's maybe nineteen, okay, and let's repeat the analysis. And now, uh, yes, these uh, onsets are clearly where uh, I think they should be. So at the beginning of every node. Okay, now uh, let's uh, open another file and look at another type of uh, feature analysis. So for example, let's uh, get that speech mail sound. Okay. And, uh, well, again, we know about this sound. Okay, and uh, let's uh, do the same thing. Let's create a pane. And let's uh, look at the MFCCs that also in class, uh, in the theory class, we talk about. So we can go to analysis category, and uh, it's in fact in uh, low level features. And there is uh, the MEL frequency coefficients. So let's click there. And again, this is a, a plugin developed by Queen Mary, in which we have some parameters. Uh, the first one is the number of coefficients. In music, uh, we use uh, quite a few more than in speech, so 20. So in speech, there is no need to take uh, so many coefficients, so 12 should be fine. And for example, there is an option here to display or not the zero coefficient, the coefficient zero, which uh, I mentioned in the theory class that relates to basically the loudness energy. Let's leave it so that we will see it. And again, we can uh, specify the uh, spectral analysis, the window size increment. Let's just leave it as uh, default. Okay, and let's analyze. Okay, and these are the all the, the coefficients as they change in time uh, as uh, okay let's uh, open it uh, here if we open it more we actually see the values of them okay so we start at the beginning we see uh, these uh, values uh, again uh, the first uh, coefficient will be the, the what I said kind of the loudness of the the sound and then here we see uh, the different uh, coefficients and the different values again by looking at it is not that uh, intuitive uh, what it does but uh, is definitely a very useful uh, set of features because basically every coefficient is a feature with which uh, we can do quite a lot of things in speech all the speech recognition uh, type of tasks uh, are done like this and uh, for uh, a lot of uh, timbre based uh, analysis this is a very good very compact description that is uh, very useful Okay, and finally, uh, let's uh, open another sound. Maybe let's open the cello sound that uh, we have been using uh, sometimes. Okay, the cello double. Okay, mm -hmm. okay this is a, a sound of a cello play with a double string. So uh, we have two strings playing at the same time. Okay, um, so this is a, a good sound in order to uh, analyze uh, the notes of it because there is two uh, phrases or two notes playing at the same time. So we can uh, perform the, the analysis of the chroma type features. And in here under visualization, there is a very nice uh, chroma analysis, uh, different from the one that uh, we showed in the theory class. Uh, but let's first uh, open an empty paint and now let's uh, analyze uh, this uh, chroma. Okay, let's uh, chromogram. Okay, and it has uh, several uh, parameters also. 
uh, like the minimum and maximum uh, pitch so that the range that it will uh, look and uh, the tuning frequency because this will basically do an equal tempered analysis and it will center a set of filters on uh, these uh, particular frequencies uh, and we can specify the number of divisions uh, per uh, one octave so in uh, western music uh, makes sense to have uh, 12 beans or 12 uh, semitones and uh, then again uh, we can have uh, window size and hop size uh, since here we want a very fine frequency resolution, uh, a large window size is uh, very good and uh, the, then the hop size also can be equally uh, large. So let's just use these uh, default parameters and let's see uh, what it uh, does. Okay, so this is the result and well, is maybe we can uh, make it a little bit uh, more pronounce and uh, well we see that uh, there is this low sound there was this uh, D sound that was playing all along okay this is uh, the normalization that it did it was an octave going from C to the next octave so to the B and here we have all the semitones on the left and uh, the notes I play, one was the D and the other was a little scale uh, played on the A. So here at the beginning uh, we see uh, clearly the C playing all along and it gets confused with uh, C sharp, maybe I was not so good at playing the C, so maybe the tuning frequency should be changed a little bit, but anyway, so the uh, D clearly is here. And then uh, the little scale on the A, uh, so this uh, started with uh, the fifth, so A, and then there was B, and then clearly, well, here I guess is that the C was being played, and then uh, again, uh, I guess uh, the D was played. So here is, in fact, that's why this comes from this fact that the upper uh, D that I played, in fact, gets uh, merged with the which gets folded because we're doing this chrome analysis with the lower D. So in fact, this is good. This is what it should be. Of course, again, this is not a visualization of the melodic analysis. This is of, of the chroma feature. So we see the pitch classes. We don't see the octave of uh, the note. And again, this is a, a very good uh, representation that can be used to study uh, chords, for example, or to study different aspects, key type aspects of music that can help us uh, understand and compare uh, pieces of music and uh, pieces of, uh, of recordings of, uh, of sounds like this one. So that's pretty good. Okay, and that's all I wanted to say. Uh, basically, we have uh, used uh, Sonic Visualizer and you can look at the website of uh, Sonic Visualizer, especially the uh, section on plugins in which you can download uh, a lot of these plugins, uh, the ones I have been using, and uh, these uh, were uh, from Queen Mary. And of course, the sounds I use are uh, the ones we use for the class and are available in, uh, in free sound. And that's all. So we have uh, used uh, the concepts that we explained in the theory class, but uh, explained them uh, with a very demonstration type of approach. Uh, we have uh, used Sonic Visualizer, and I believe that gives us a very intuitive uh, point of view into these uh, uh, sound attributes. Of course, uh, the interest of them is especially when we computationally compare with other sounds and we can do a sort of more quantitative type of analysis uh, based on these features. And that's all for today, uh, so thank you very much and in the next uh, demonstration class we will uh, do another demonstration and in that case uh, related with uh, free sound. So thank you very much, see you then.